we have a new rescue. Inside of this container is a garter snake that we sold to a family last summer, so about eight months ago or so. They noticed about a week ago that it started developing neurological issues. So we're not keeping it permanently, we're just taking it back to try to get it back on the right track and to try to heal this neurologically challenged garter snake. Neurological issues are usually caused by something being imbalanced or missing in their diet, which uh, usually when you feed a garter snake fish, it can cause issues if you feed them the wrong species of fish. Some species contain an enzyme called thiaminase, which prevents the snake from absorbing thiamine or vitamin B it ends up being, so they have a vitamin B deficiency. However, this snake was fed tilapia, which is thiaminase free, so it must not be a vitamin B deficiency from the diet, but there's something deficient in its diet uh, because it's being fed only tilapia, and too much of one thing is never good. This could have been prevented if the snake was fed a variety of food items. That's why you don't just feed garter snakes fish, even though it's a good species of fish, or just worms. They really need mice. Mice have a lot more nutrients in them than fish or worms. But regardless, we have a neurologically challenged garter snake on our hands, so we're taking it back to try to heal this issue. If you haven't seen it yet, the snake is bobbing, kind of lolling his head back and forth. He definitely seems, or she, definitely seems unbalanced. Yeah, so there's definitely something up. Some sort of vitamin or nutrient is missing in her diet and that's causing her, most or less most likely causing her to have this head wobble issue. So what we're going to do is try to pump her full of different vitamins and over the course of hopefully a week or two, we can start getting her behavior here to improve. But I'm not 100% sure if we're gonna be able to get her back to normal, um, but we're gonna record our progress and have her fingers crossed. The first thing we're going to do is try to get a pinky mouse in there because, you know, that has a lot of nutrients. But I also, just in case it's a vit vitamin B deficiency, I want to get some vitamin B in her as well. And this is water soluble, so if you give them too much of this vitamin B, it's just regular vitamin B you get at a pharmacy. Uh, if they have too much, it's just passed through their systems in the form of urates. But I can't give her this whole pill, of course, so I'm actually just going to cut off a little chunk and, okay, like, squeamish alert, I'm gonna take the head off this pinky and put the pill in the head, so. FYI, that's what we're doing next. Let's see if she eats. We literally just got the snake back. There we go. All right, got a lot in there. Now, in case it's not a vitamin B deficiency and it's something else, I'm using kind of an overall vitamin or powdered vitamin mix. And I'm going to dip the rear end of the mouse in that, because if she's already eating it, she's not going to care what's at the end of the mouse. There. Now we have a ton of vitamins that we're going to get back in her system if she eats it. I don't know if she is. If she doesn't, I have a, another plan. I guess she, unfortunately, has not eaten in a couple of weeks, so that's not a good sign. But maybe she just wants a different food item. Hey, okay. What is that? Oh, had some tongue flicks. Are you going to eat? Okay, so she doesn't want to willingly eat the pinky, which is like, shoot, but that's okay. Plan B is for me to assist feed her uh, another piece of mouse and then try to conveyor belt in the vitamin duct piece of pinky. So this is just, I just want to give you a heads up or a disclaimer that don't try this at home unless you are experienced and professionally trained. This would be something that's best done by a veterinarian. Will you eat? If I hold her still, I'm really curious to see if maybe she's just too wobbly to want to eat. Let's see if she takes it down on her own. If we can get any feeding response out of her, it'd be great, because then I can just sneak in the rest of that pinky. And the yellow, by the way, is caused by vitamin B. It turns yellow when it comes into contact with really any liquid. Now I'm making sure that her glottis down here is not blocked, because that's her airway, essentially. And if it was blocked, she wouldn't be able to breathe while I'm sitting here waiting for her to eat. So I am gonna have to end up force feeding this one, but since she is needs these vitamins, that's why I'm going to do it. There we go. See, that wasn't too bad. Well, now the hope is after she digests this meal and starts absorbing those nutrients, her neurological issues start becoming subdued and she starts acting a little more balanced and her head doesn't flop around as much. It'll probably take a few meals that are coated in vitamins before we see any improvement. So have your fingers crossed. 
hopefully with some consistent feedings that are loaded with vitamins, we'll start seeing some improvement soon. It's been a couple of days and I sadly don't see any improvement, so I'm getting a little worried, but it's, again, only been a few days since the first meal, so we'll check back later. I was a little bit worried because a few days after we fed her that first meal, we didn't see any improvement at all, and so we gave her another meal that was coated in multivitamin powder. And now it's been about nine days since we brought her back and check her out. Where are you? I keep her in something smaller just to keep her, it's just temporary. And watch her move around. There's no more head lolling to one side and then the other. She's holding herself steady, good tongue flicks. She's alert and she's, she looks completely normal. I can't believe it. It was like a sudden overnight thing too. So I guess packing her full of vitamins did the trick. Might be wondering why I'm keeping her in here without a water dish. And that's because snakes with neurological issues may, that, that can't control their head movements may dip their head into the water and then drown themselves. So what I've been doing is I'm giving her this water by hand and I've just been making sure she takes drinks. I just trick drink earlier today so she might not again. The reason why the water is yellow is because I have some vitamin B that is dissolved inside of it and that just, it's a yellow pill and that's just why it discolors the water. But that's getting additional vitamins in here and I think that's also helped out. But for any animal with neurological issues, you don't want to have water in their enclosure because they could drown in it. Now the question is, does she have her appetite back? Now the first two meals, which are the only meals she's had with us, uh, were forced slash assist fed. She didn't want to eat them. So I'm really curious to see if she does want to start eating again. And I have not tried feeding her at all today. Although I know she has a big appetite or at least she did in her previous home. So I'm just going to set her back in here. The only problem is that since she was only fed tilapia at her previous home, she might not want to eat the pinky even if she does, oh sorry, even if she does have her appetite back. Hey girl, do you want it? No, you don't. Man, she's holding herself so well. This is so great to see. Okay, so she didn't take it. I kind of figured she wouldn't. This is a little trick we use with hognose snakes, but it works for garters too, because some garters only like fish, some only like worms, some only like mice. So to get them to eat something new, you just scent what you want them to eat with their favorite food, in this case, tilapia. And then you can sometimes trick them into eating something different. Let's see if that does the trick. Yeah, don't have the appetite back yet, huh? Okay, she did not want the pinky, so the next trick is to just place it in a deli, place her inside, then cover her up, and we'll leave her alone for a little bit and see if she eats it in privacy. Something else I recommend doing if you're trying this technique is putting the food item along the side of the container. That way when she's trying to push her way out or she's making rounds, she'll bump into it a lot. Oh. No, are you just trying to dig underneath it? Yeah, okay. Well, then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to cover her up so there's fewer distractions around her too. And we'll check back in about 15 minutes. Well, it's been about 15 minutes and let's see if she has eaten. Ah, no, she hasn't. Well, that doesn't really surprise me. She could either be, or it could be because she is used to eating tilapia and she doesn't, it still smells too much like a mouse for her to want to eat it. Or she could still be full from the two meals we assist fed her earlier throughout the week. So I'm not terribly surprised and I'm not too concerned because her behavior is so much better than what it was originally when we first took her back. So what I'll do is instead of caving and giving her tilapia, not that I'm, I don't know, I don't know if she'd eat it or not anyway, but I'm gonna give her a few days off and see if she's hungry enough to eat in three or four days or so. Next, I tried moving her in with her sister, which was a holdback from last year, so I'm glad I hang on to her, because I found that if garters are kept in groups, they typically eat better, but unfortunately, that didn't work. She still didn't want to eat. I have moved the little guys over to bedding to see if that makes the little baby feel more secure. Hi, hey, cutie. Look, it's fish. She still shows no interest in eating. Well, unfortunately, she still does not want to eat. However, the neurological issue that she was displaying is completely gone and she is acting totally fine otherwise, acting like a healthy, happy garter snake. And hopefully it'll just be a matter of time until her appetite comes back. I sadly won't be able to work with her any longer because her owner does want her back and they think they can get her with the scenting technique they can get her on pinkies eventually. So what I did today was I actually force fed her one more pinky that was coated in that vitamin mixture, which is just, um, where is it? 
this. I use the RepCal Herpivite. Herpivite? That sounds weird. The RepCal Herpdivite, and this is really what made her bounce back. It seems to have really worked well, although the main issue was that she was only being fed tilapia, a single food item for the majority of her life so far, and uh, that was just because um, the owner didn't know any better, so I don't blame her at all, she just didn't know, and now she knows that this snake will should be getting pinkies. But that's why it's so important to do your research, and it's always a learning process. I'm even learning new things every day, and uh, if, you're feed, if you have garter snakes, make sure you are feeding them a varied diet. A lot of people like garter snakes because they think they can only eat insects or uh, fish and they don't need rodents in their diet, but they do. It is essential to get some rodents in their diet occasionally, like one mouse every other week at least, and then you can replace the rest of their meals with other food items, but they need those rodents to complete their diet. So the reason why I force fed her today was because I wanted to buy her some time in case it still takes a little while for her to start eating on her own back at her owner's house. I hope today's video taught you something new about garter snake diets. Thank you for watching, and also thank you to all of our Patreon supporters for backing this channel, and we'll see you next time.